Welcome back everyone, Ronan here. And today I'm gonna to show the second set of highlights in a new format for XCOM 2. As you can see, I'm kind of showing off that the green screen, I need more lighting. Uh, this is my first attempt at making a green screen, so let's bear with. I also wanna say that I'm gonna change my streaming schedule. I'm gonna reduce the amount of streaming I do just so I can do the editing a bit better. Um, I find that I'm lacking in the time management for editing. So until I can fi figure out how to save more time in my day, I'm gonna be streaming for about three hours a day, uh, six days a week, Tuesdays I'm not gonna stream, and then Saturday is gonna be my buffer in case I'm still behind on editing. So thank you all again for coming and watching my videos. It's awesome, I love the support. In this video, I go over a few segments where I was unlucky. I also go over a few tips and tricks that may help you survive in XCOM. I must admit, I got pretty lucky here. I was just getting ready for the pull. I knew they were there, but they weren't initiated yet. So then I think my Overwatch shots, which can be a pretty effective way to do things. I find out really like doing this when I'm in concealment or to initiate, but when it's on their turn, it's amazing. These mutons seem a little more agile than the ones so they're moving forward, the and this is what Looks I like really like here. As the aliens front line, though. Everybody's taking their shots, they're missing. It happens a lot, Target's Overwatch is not that effective. Moving. Then you get your uh, grenadier and she blows up cover for the muton that he was going for. Amazing, because now he's in the open. I don't even have to throw a grenade aim. to break his cover, he's just screwed. So, again, in the same map, uh, this is probably one of the harder maps now, I would say, the swarming maps, at least so far. And because you have a hidden time frame, you have to rush at getting civilians before the aliens kill too many of them and then you fail your mission. And that's going to hurt your avatar project. Now, these faceless can definitely hurt you, especially if you have the starter armor still. So, I just spawned a faceless by using a battle re uh, scanner. So use whatever you can, battle scanners, um, the hacker's protocol to see farther, because that will greatly help you being able to move forward to not get hit by a faceless. This is just that same faceless that I just spawned. Now he's gonna rush towards me, and my overwatch is ready for him, so he will not be an issue. This is pretty much what you don't want to happen. Uh, I was behind on saving my civilians, so I was really in a rush to make it to my six saved civilians. So I spawned faceless, taking in the civilian. Alright, no big deal. You know, I can deal with one faceless. But at the same time, I spawned a group of advent. So my soldier now is in front of a faceless, not in the open. And there's three advent about to shoot at him. So I did everything I could, or tried everything I could, because it was also not my first move that turn. Which is, again, a big mistake. You always want to try to pull characters on your first move. So for this, I used Aid Protocol. Which basically will put my soldier in light cover. It's at least something. Oh, it was like my last move. Wow. I have a few soldiers in the open. Luckily, Richard with the surgical precision with the shotgun. And here, these guys I really don't like, but luckily I got stunned and not unconscious because that would have made the fight a bit harder. Or even. You know, just kill it out, right? Because that has happened to me before. Their movement speed is pretty high. That one hurt a little. And it's basically because they can actually attack you after that second move. Which in the first one, that was not an issue. And the gremlin actually protected move. my soldier from the melee attack, which was amazing. So all in all, this was actually a pretty good turn. It was basically based off luck. 
this was all luck. There was no no really skill there. I just left it to the RNG gods. Alright, this is going to be one of the longer segments of the video. I was in concealment phase. I saw the aliens, Mudan, and On your now order. that I rewatch it, I kind of understand better. I moved a few steps forward. Because I didn't here. see where the sectoid was, I didn't realize where I was allowed to move. Now, it looks like I'm fine behind cover, and I thought the rules are if you're behind cover, you're fine. But because the sectoid was there, Good I'm going Moving to assume target. they can see through windshields. Because cover has different meaning now. And I think it saw me through the windows of the car. Now, this was not a feature or a mechanic in XCOM 1. If you hid behind a car that was full cover on both sides, you were fine. And what I mean by with both sides, on both sides of you, if you have any full cover on both sides of you, the enemy couldn't see you through it, even if it was a car. Now, I think they've changed this, and by being on the box of the car, it saw me through the windshield. And because of where it was, I didn't see it in my line of sight. I didn't know that that square was going to find me out or put me out of concealment. So now that I watch it, it's more or less of an awareness thing, even for me, because at first I was like, "What? this is ridiculous. I'm behind cover. How does that work? So high cover that is glass, not a good one to be behind us. Also, at the same time, the mimic beacons now, those are amazing. Get one as soon as you can. Uh, I'm going to get at least two for my runs because they basically, it's, um, it's like having a lifeline. Basically, I put it down and it will this is for you. almost focus the enemy towards it. It's like a soldier either in, in the open or behind cover. It's the first soldier. It will attract them. It's like in World of Warcraft Vanilla, the target dummy. It's amazing. So I generally use it when I, I derp. When I make a mistake, this is what I put out. And then hopefully I can fix the mistake after. Definitely, you're going to want at least two of these in your group. And this is just going to show you how good it hey, is. It now, I finish off the turn, or I keep showing the turn. I use Kevin's hacking protocol, and I hack the drone. And I hack the droid. Now, the fight just goes on. Uh, I fast forward anyway, double speed, just to show what I did. Then it also shows one of the mistakes I guess I, I did with the mimic beacon. So here with the Mimic Beacon, it's the enemy's turn, so the droid is still stunned, but this is where it comes into play. The Mimic Beacon actually is in line of sight with enemies I had not spawned yet or thought I didn't spawn yet. It could be with the droid as a group, so do take care with that where you launch it, if you launch it farther than you've been before you could initiate combat with enemies, which is what happened here, I think. I pulled another group, and then the mech had five soldiers with it. But it still did its job, I mean. It still took fire away from my soldiers, which is what it's there for, really. And I got lucky there. Incoming, over here! This here is a wasted uh, scan protocol, I think it's called. Yeah, scanning protocol. I didn't really understand what the range was. I should have not wasted it. That wasted a turn. And I realized that with Kevin, that he had the new Gremlin Mark II, which does even more damage to the mechs. This 4 to 5 now instead of 2 to 3. So it is pretty amazing. Or it could actually be. I think it's more even now that I have the Mark II's now. 
I think four to five on a mech is just standard damage, and two to three on a normal add. So I just basically go through all my grenades here. This is kind of why I carry two grenadiers right now, just for the sheer AOE damage that they can do. There goes another grenade, I think. There we go. So I'd rather kill the enemy and lose the loot than having to lose a soldier. I think losing a soldier is more detrimental than losing a few pieces of gear. If you can make it happen, then kill him with uh, bullets so you don't lose gear. Alright, so here I'm kind of desperate because I don't want my panic soldier to die and that's star force and i was trying to, he was shaking already and i was trying to not get him hit and i did a really bad job at that so i managed to burn that soldier by doing so i kind of limited my effectiveness so i really tried to you know slash him but i couldn't get in there because of the fire this is an instance where Blade Master would have come in handy, or maybe moving to a better position. Because I couldn't shoot him from there. I couldn't use my sword. To use my sword, I had to run into fire. It was just a really bad situation. And I tried to... Good to go. Unless there's a way that I can do this, but... I tried to hit... The, the, I tried to do a sword attack after a move. But I already had my first move done, so I'm not sure if there's a way to use the waypoints for this. I'm pretty sure that's what I ended up doing. I ended up using my waypoints, but could not, could not get in a good spot without catching fire. So as soon as I click or the, the skill, even after I put a waypoint, it just overrides it. It makes it so you can't take that sword hit. So I'm not sure if it's something that I'm not I'm doing wrong or that may be fixed later on. And in hindsight, I should have just taken the hit. I should have just hacked or did the Overwatch. Anything else than what I just did. I should have just killed him outright and take the one fire damage or two fire damage and save the soldiers. They got me. Now that was another lesson learned for me by watching my video. So it's pretty awesome. Alright, this portion is going to get cut into a little bit. So I ended up using a beacon and I saw three targets scanned, but it didn't show me what they were. Or I didn't even bother going looking. I figured it was civilians. Okay, no. So there we go. Three vipers and one civilian. So I spawned the vipers. Now. They're like a couple turns from now, so we'll just speed through. I find it kind of funny now that civilians are near you, but they're not afraid. They don't run out. They just move out of your way. And it's the same with the aliens. They'll just move away whenever get somebody gets close to them. It's kind of interesting. So now we just have to deal with the one pull on the outside of you know, the other building in the courtyard, I guess you could say. I'm getting everybody in position. Finally get some overwatch. Which surprisingly my shotgun is pretty effective at long ranges. So there they are, I still see them. So mimic beacon, again, amazing. I just put it down and it buys me a turn. So I can basically do whatever I want this turn. Sorry about that, my mic just took a dump. For oh, the program. So Grandpa gets a nice pistol kill. Or hit. Lucky hit, I should say. Then we have Crater. Finishes it off. Alright, we're just trying to speed through this. And because I have the beacon down, I really can do whatever I want this turn. It doesn't really matter what I do. I can just move my soldiers right up for flanks almost. And they will target the beacon. Be careful not to leave your guys flanked, because that could change the outcome. 
It tries to bring it in. It can't. It's not a solid mass. It's a hologram. Then this one tries to bind it. it still doesn't work. Now, I kind of thought it was a bad mechanic that it only lasted one turn. But I'm pretty confident anything la longer than one turn is overpowered. So we make short work of these guys. Because they were lining up for the beacon, not for me. Now there is a mechanic in this. Uh, I think it just went through. The dodge mechanic. The vipers are really good at dodging. And that's the two ways you can actually mitigate damage. You either wear armor or high agility, which you can now dodge attacks, which reduces the damage. But it's more of an RNG feature than armor, which is straight values. So now we just move on to the other side of the courtyard. So knowing that there was three vipers in there, I decided to throw a beacon. Now by throwing a second beacon, it almost caught me off guard saying, well, were those the ones I just fought? But I only fought two, so I knew it was pretty much impossible. Now, I have Molder right there. He should be able to see through the windows. For some reason, he doesn't. Now, so we keep moving up. We're like, well, where did they go? So everybody's just moving up. I feel pretty confident because somebody can see right through the windows. So I just start moving dashing moves, which is generally a mistake, especially with this game, since there are flaws in the line of sight mechanics. I'm not saying that they're terrible, but sometimes a few things get missed. Even move my VIP way up. So, actually on this turn, people see them, but they're not told, they're not initiated, they're just there in a clump. It's like, what is this? So I'm trying to wrap my head around it. What do we do? What can I do to pull them without actually, or how can I move up without initiating combat? Like, Where can I go so I can launch that perfectly placed grenade? to maximize damage and pull the enemy. Because I'm not in concealment right now. This is actual combat. So generally, if you see them, they see you. So I have a frag grenade with Molder, and I try to line it up. It's just not really working for me. So I decide to think, screw it, and just hit it anyway. At least I should be able to, able to hit one, maybe two of them. If you look at the orange pattern. Get ready for a surprise! It launches a grenade. It only hits one of them. But still, they're not initiated. They're still not in combat. I'm kind of <laughs> at a loss there. I'm like, well, what is going on? And then I don't see them. They're no longer in my field of view. This is where... Strange move. things happen and you don't really know what to do from there. So I put Star Force in the window. He doesn't see them. It's like, what is going on here? So how this is where trying to make tactical decisions is really hard in XCOM because weird stuff happens. Moving to position. So I finally say screw it. They have to be there. There's no way they're not there. So grenade I threw out. another grenade. Now, if there's an ethereal around, that happened to me in XCOM 1 where everybody teleported. I did damage and nobody got hit and they just teleported back. That wasn't the case. I didn't see an ethereal there. Which that was probably a glitch anyway. So I hit all three of them with fire. Still not initiated. Now, did they die? Like, what is going on in there? I have no idea. For some reason, there's a mysterious wall that's not letting me do anything. So I bring Crater closer. Hopefully, he can open the, the door, do something, see them. All three are still standing. Now, since they're burning, I'm pretty sure two of them are dead. Burning tends to do three damage to these guys. Now they're initiated. So 
So just from moving, the one should have taken burn damage, but that wasn't the case. So I'm throwing a flashbang, just as a precaution. I'm pretty sure the flashbang prevents them... It prevents them from using any abilities. Because they're disoriented, they can't actually lock on with uh, their tongue or their poison. But it doesn't really reduce their aim. My ammo's running low! Yeah, I thought that was really interesting, and uh, hopefully this doesn't happen too often, especially if you're an Iron Man where you can't reload when stupid stuff happens. So there's one dead from burning, two dead from burning. So it's a pretty good pull. So right here goes to show, take your time, even if there's no more enemies, you're ready for evac. I have three turns left. This would have pissed me off in Iron Man. And I'm just trying to hurry and bring everybody out. And then Crater decides to stay behind. So I have to reload here just to bring Crater back to the ship so we didn't lose a soldier from a mistake. Okay, so this is part of the story quest, I would say, where you have to assault probably your first base, which will help you reduce the panic from the Avatar project. We have a pull. You know, nothing big. Robot to you know, face soldiers, so it's fairly easy to do. But this is where the RNG likes to laugh at you right in your face. And I tend to make decisions based on math. So I'm looking at my values here. So I'm like, okay, well, I can kill one outright for 74 percent Missed. All right, not a big deal. Let's keep going. So I brought in my Ranger for a 90% hit. That worked, but it didn't kill the mech. So we move on. Now we have Crater going for a second shot because the first one was lightning hands. So he goes for another pistol shot at 74% again. Missed. Bravo. I'm kind of like, uh, the odds are shitty, not in my favor. So, decide to move Spooky up. But I have to move him where he can take a shot. On the move. Now, he aims. So, Grandpa takes a 59% shot. And misses. So that's three misses Still this turn already. That's pretty crucial when you're trying to fight enemies. Now we have a 65% shot. Missed. Not even close. I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. I actually went and did the math on this. And some of you may want to correct me if I'm wrong. But for four of these shots to miss. So while I was too busy being pissed off with the math, I failed to notice that Zed was actually doing a really good job holding them up. So Zedified is just standing there. He only has four HP. I actually wrote him off as dead. He gets hit by a crit right there, but the mech is actually stunned, which I just noticed now. So Zed's got one HP left. So there may be a bit more to the calculations, but if I just use that for those four hits to miss, I did the chance to miss time each other. So I did 0.26 times 0.26 times 0.41 times 0.35, and it gave me 0.97% chance to happen. Less than 1% chance, and it happened. Now, that is ridiculous, especially when you're trying to base your decisions on math for your tactics. And you can see me in the video, I actually go and try to do the math right now. It's frustrating, but it happens, which means that with this 1% chance to happen, later on in the game, I won't notice a 1% chance in my favor. So, just food for thought. As always, thank you all for coming. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.